good afternoon ladies and gentlemen so we are a company which is actively involved in landfill mining uh, when i say landfill mining we are dealing with legacy waste here we don't deal with fresh waste i mean this is something which everybody knows landfills in india which is mostly unsegregated waste so you can expect cnd waste from bulk generators like hotels door to door collection uh, th uh, you know the waste from door to door collection industrial waste sometimes and uh, market and slaughterhouse waste now the problem here is that uh, we we have studied uh, about 5 to 6 dump sites and uh, the study that shows is the waste characteristics more or less is same in terms of the quantity of uh, combustibles to non combustibles that is how we uh, tackle you know deal with the legacy waste we don't get into multiple uh, streams like plastics or tires and everything so we deal it like combustibles and non combustibles so the percentage varies between 15 to 20% and all others we are trying uh, you know we have found out that it's ranging between 80 to you know 85 70 to 80% so this is the current scenario uh, the dump sizes mega cities more than 10 million tons capitals and then other cities this is the uh, this is giving you a rough picture on what are we dealing with today uh, just to uh, tell you uh, this is um, uh, just to give you a brief idea uh, India today generates about 0.1 million tons of waste from urban cities alone, and less than 10% of that waste is today processed. So uh, we, we are sitting on a time bomb. So the, it is time that legacy waste be handled, and these landfills are taken out or probably secured. So this is just one picture of an unstable waste of uh, Delhi, and uh, the leachate at the front. Now, what's wrong? What's wrong with these uh, dump sites? I think most of you know. there is an anaerobic environment leading leading to leachate chemical and unstable waste leachate hazardous gases air and water pollution soil contamination and of course it's an eyesore uh, so how are we treating this so we are now uh, you know sigma and forcebell we came together forcebell is a company based out of south korea it's a, a 15 year old company 15 year old company which is uh, been doing uh, landfill mining in uh, in south korea japan sri lanka Uh, in some places in the middle east so they have done more than 100 msw sites uh, in terms of uh, reclamation so when we talk about methodologies of scientific closure landfill capping was earlier uh, one of the methodologies which was adopted as per swm rules 2000 now 2016 gives an opportunity for landfill mining as a priority over landfill capping so that has given us some scope and some uh, uh, you know breathing space that we can indeed uh bring ulbs on board in terms of uh, telling them that landfill mining indeed is a permanent solution over capping so this is the steps that we follow uh, let me tell you about what happened in 2015 when we started landfill mining our first site in kumbakonam the site was 12 acres uh, there was about 2 lakh tons which was there so initially we thought that uh, let's segregate into maximum components as possible you can see a video of ours on the youtube uh, where you will see that we have segregated into more than more than 17 aggregates but ultimately we found out that this was a uh, you know a methodology which is not giving us any uh, uh, you know commercial advantage we basically did that so that we could uh, you know uh, reduce the costs of these ulbs in terms of paying us for processing but ultimately we found out that none of these components are paying us any uh, good price because of various reasons so then we started getting into more uh, customization so we decided that we'll get into only segregation of two components combustibles and non combustibles so initially what we do is we do a pre assessment study we find out what is the waste characteristics we do a survey of the dump site we do drone mapping we find out the volume and then we come to a conclusion how and what part of the waste should be handled and where do we put up the plant we basically work on a bot model so uh, no no bo model so there is we set up the machinery inside the plant and then we segregate it and then we clear the landfill now pre stabilization pre stabilization we do in two methodologies the first methodology would be for smaller dump sites where we keep on aerating the dumps by making it smaller heaps and spraying it with bioculture spraying with deodorizer to ensure that the working environment uh, becomes better and ultimately reduce the moisture to the level of 15 to 25% and then probably make it a little bit drier and then it is easy for us to for the next process the other methodology that our korean counterparts use is a methodology where they uh, you know blow in air sometimes blow or sometimes suck 
uh, to ensure that the methane is removed. It is done on a top down approach. I will show you that in the next slide how they do it. It has, it cannot be done for the whole dump site at one stage. It has to be done into uh, in a small pieces with a top down approach. So that is basically for bigger dump sites where we are handling very big and large quantities. The next step is of course segregation. We call ourselves very good segregators. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this technology is not something that is, uh, you know, as complicated as, uh, uh, you know, handling slag or something. It is simple. Segregate it at the best. Make sure that there is no combustibles in the non-combustible and make sure that there is no non-combustibles in the combustibles. That's when you can dispose it responsibly. That's what we have understood with three years of our experience here. And then the third is scientific disposal of aggregates. We get just two components as I earlier told you. One is combustibles which we uh, currently uh, supply to the cement companies in India. We have certain uh, corporate tie-ups with cement companies. Of course, there is a challenge there which I would later on tell you about what is the difficulty in doing that. The second part is non-combustibles which is inerts, basically soil, sand, stone. What we are currently doing in Gumbakonam is we have these low-lying areas which has been mined by clay soil. So we have done a lot of experiments there. We have done some studies. Uh, we have also seen that uh, there is no heavy metal content, so thank God for that. And uh, SWM Rose 2016 is something that we uh, use as a benchmark in terms of testing all the aggregates. And uh, we, uh, you know, dump these inerts into those low-lying areas. So this is what I meant by top-down approach. So if you see these uh, boxes of one, two, three, this is basically a dump. So we put these pipes on the box number one, uh, and then we start sucking or you know, suction and usage of methane in India is becoming a uh, bit, uh, bit costly. We have not even started doing that. We've just seen this methodology in Korea and we start to implement that in probably any bigger projects that we might intend to take. So we do this approach and then we uh, handle the whole dump sites. So this is one uh, picture of our uh, plant. This is a dome uh, which we uh, put in. It's the entire thing is uh, can be fixed and removed, erected and decommissioned or commissioned and decommissioned within a short span of one and a half months. That's how it is. Uh, there is, so this is basically a plant which is running at 800 tons per day and uh, input is 800 tons per day. Basically what we get at the end is, uh, yeah, so th this is basically sir that uh, we are segregating by size and weight. So there is air density separators, there is trommels. There is uh, combustible separators. We have got patents for more than 15 uh, uh, machineries of ours. Our trommels are uh, not the normal trommels which you can see in fresh waste plant. These are highly, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 highly, highly, uh, highly um, uh, trommels which can take very large quantities. So what I am talking about is about 60 to 70 tons per hour. The problem, the, uh, what they talk about CRRI report is it's it's just a report that is done in the lab. So we need to see working. So this is a before and after picture of Kumbhakonam. So you can see the land being reclaimed. Uh, now, if you come now, this land has been used for setting up a fresh waste facility. 800 tons per day, one unit. It starts from 150 tons per day. No, we bid for the Mando tender. The things are not moving. I mean, we were the only people. Yeah, so this is a before and after picture of Kumbhakonam. So basically what we have done is, uh, this was 12 acres of land as I said. So now they have completely reclaimed the land and they have set up a fresh waste facility here. Yeah. Uh, it should involve a lot of people, particularly those who are here. Because nationwide, if you have to solve this problem, one person cannot. Yeah. So I think regional basis, go to different IIDs, NIIDs. Niri. Without the country level. Yeah. The only landfills would be there in the entire country. If you can count, more than 50 or 100. Oh, thousands. No, 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 big ones. <laughs> big ones. Yeah. About 50, yeah. Yeah. Currently, they are filling two, sir. Yeah. Next. This was one year. But there are four. No, now we are doing that procedure, sir. We've just finished. Because they had another plan that you need to construct a slurry wall or something. Okay. Okay. No, there was nothing like that. See, these tenders are not talking. They just say that we want to reclaim the land to the uh, ground level. I tell you, as I say, problem is 
you just do and they do everything and they do something else. Then the people will suffer. Yeah. Okay. We don't want such thing. Like I was seeing that if you really, you know, if you want to be a successful uh, officer or uh, whatever company, you should really measure, you know, after the your uh, test is over. Correct. You know, then, you know, at least for your own yes, sake, yes. somebody will say that, no, no, he did it. <laughs> or people are careful that he, because of him, everything is fine. Yeah. So please be careful. This point is also very important. Correct. No, 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 <laughs> no, uh, right now we have started yes, the first project which we did. Uh, we had very little, uh, you know. Uh, in Actually, I, my own understanding was that for the past five years, the stock of bio mining is there. All agricultural people are mining, many others came in the future, but they didn't have any idea of what to be done. But this is a good issue. Like I, this idea was there in Bangalore, so mining is one thing, but uh, where do you dump after mining? Wherever you go to the project. That's why the, this is more applicable to smaller 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 so the challenge is the first thing is acceptance of technology. So when we now go to the ULBs and tell them about landfill mining, the first thing that they uh, ask us is that is it possible? So the first thing is we've. I think landfill mining is one of the techniques in the guidelines. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but it's still not gone uh, to that level where people are understanding. <laughs> So, Niri has been in the committee member for Vasai Virars, where we are actively involved. Mr. Rakesh Kumar was there. Yeah. And then uh, the other problem is the SWM rules 2016 is very uh, naive in terms of uh, disposal of aggregates. So that's something that we are finding tough. Sorry? Disposal of? Aggregates in terms of inerts. Okay, that's not a problem. Yeah. Okay, that can be seen. No, it's more than 70 percent. 70, yeah. yeah. So that's something that we are trying to do. That's what we are trying to do. And CTWD and other government organizations. Because they are supposed to be in the places where you have to dump things after mining. Yeah. In Goa, they have come up with this uh, methodology where these uh, quarries have been identified, sir. The government himself is giving quarries. No, saying that's that the most dangerous. Mm. Okay. I've seen in Bangalore, uh, all quarries are there and dumping everywhere, all this material. And it's polluting a lot of water. <laughs> so, that's the third point and the most important is RDF disposal. Now, the this RDF disposal is directly contributing to the dipping fees to the ULB. Now, the RDF problem is the cement companies, we are completely dependent on our cement companies and they understand it. So, it is a supply demand game. So, they talk about zero, uh, you know, zero cost delivery or negative cost delivery. So, I will have to load the logistics cost which is prohibitive sometimes on the tipping fees. Now, this is what is taking us uh, into a big problem and uh, but uh, I, we have no other option. We have lost lot of orders because of this because people do not understand. But there is another option where in places like Pimpri Chinchwad where they are coming up with a waste to energy plant. So, what we do is we keep this RDF separately bailed. So, they use it in the future for the waste to energy plants for their uh, you know incineration. So, that is what is happening in some places, but uh, in places like Mumbai where the nearest cement plant is either Wadi or Chandrapur, it, the cost is prohibitive at 800 to 900 kilometers. Uh, as far as, for example, putting these materials into the crude or as a compost, we have done analysis and we have found that these materials have, for example, uh, fine materials have toxic substances that are much higher than the compost standard. Hence, this can directly, can go directly to any kind of agricultural field until unless you want to use another compost. We need a treatment that, and then we need additional money. 
So I think the other thing is possible, what they are doing is great though, but probably the municipality has to keep money, sufficient money, not thinking that, you know, they are generating resources. The problem is when you uh, uh, look at the uh, uh, segregation and uh, aggregate for construction of education, the organic material is still beyond the permissible limit. Uh, the CRR in the report, with, uh, they say that uh, it should be within 5, 7 percent, 8 percent. But it often goes to uh, 20, more 20 percent, 50 percent, more than 20 percent. So that is something which is not acceptable to uh, uh, people who are engaged in road building. For example, in HI, they say that you need to ensure the consistent quality of the batch you send. So that becomes a challenge. And uh, ensuring that uh, consistent quality is delivered every time, whether it's RDF or it's uh, particular for road construction, is a challenge. What is the biggest <coughs> motivation here would be that if government and makes it mandatory for cement companies to use at least certain percentage of RDF. If the government comes in and tells that, then it becomes a, no, it becomes, it, it doesn't become the supply and chain. Even if they pay us the transportation cost, it is still a viable project. It's still a viable project for smaller ULPs. Now, the problems are with the smaller ULPs because they are not able to generate funds. The fourth point is handholding for finance. The cost becomes prohibitive when, uh, you know, uh, when the RDF disposal comes in. Because let us say if a PCMC wants to dispose it, the RDF cost itself per ton comes to around 450 to 500 rupees. This is exorbitant. Because today fresh waste tipping fees itself is around 550 to 600 rupees. So somebody compares that and says no, 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 it is not possible. So I think until government intervenes and brings the cement companies uh, on board and say that this has to be used like how they brought in for city compost, if they use like even 5 percent, it is going to be great probably giving them some timeline saying that another one year is the time because definitely cement companies have to put in a lot of capital investment because they have to also bring their machineries on par to use RDF that is also one of the things. Uh, currently, uh, Professor and Jacob Sitara, uh, also happen to be in the center of the I am a median bureaucracy in the Shabushan class and I am a dad of the government secretary. But this, this is of interest to me because this whole issue of uh, urban waste. Uh, and, uh, and so I was associated with it uh, right since 1987. Uh, every time what happens is we see a promising technology. And we do the end to end uh, solution analysis, that is where the data comes in. We had this stage uh, looking at uh, it as a viable business, a viable business parking of the long Just have to say this waste uh, has to be neutralized, and therefore there will be a cost of neutralization. Individual sub components will be a profit sector. Overall, we, we can't take a stand that That concept that is something which is great. And that urban bodies have to take this call. Urban bodies, given their capacity, will not be taking this call. They will look up to the Mandala and I don't know about Maharashtra, it's better. But Mantale also the thing is they are going government of India to do a standard level in India. So it becomes a But then the question would be how to shape it up as a good business model. Young guys can step in and take any observations. It's a big job. One company, one of them. I will take a funding. Reasonably decent business models after they ran through the force of those five hours of power play. Somehow, what we are saying is that you must have been a super tan. You super tan, the five hours of power play, the accident. So, my point in these cases is these five hours of power play have worked. Before that, technology part we are solving. That is one point which I might have missed it. 
that if you are not placed in power play, I congratulate you. But the, the whole idea is someone has to sit in the green room, dispatch immediately, document these uh, values without jumping onto the values of the internet. And then we will have to sit with government saying, we think Amare and Suk as a tag. And there, in my opinion, three classifications are very important. Metro is one, different borders, million plus city. I think that is where we can make it work. Then that is important. And then below, the three will have been created and the detailed models will also differ from these things. I am working with Trimble. I look after the infrastructure and construction business for Trimble. Another question would be, how many of you know Trimble? So I don't know. I leave that, you know, for the later part. All of us know. So, All of us are then surveying course. So just a question, sir, what you just mentioned. So looking what you said generally, you know, by and large, that is okay. But if you talk about the smart cities, the four, you know, typically the four in the, uh, you know, Pan city as well as the local, you know, area development. There is a special funding which is which has been researched for uh, solid waste management. So <coughs> under Amrut, 506 municipalities plus the 100 smart cities, out of which you know now 60 are already the tenders are you know getting out. I think there should be a way to to overcome this these future which which are the practical challenges that you mentioned. So what what is your or, you know, maybe on behalf of the administration, what do you see the direction there? Now, in my data specification itself, this problem has to be tackled. As I said, an activity would be a problem. Same. But overall, I still don't think whether it can get into a business model unless you get the specific uh, specific issues related to that particular set. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. So the so the notice inviting tender has to anticipate these problems, and that is exactly the answer. Someone has to sit in the green room and put that these barriers, then take it all. Because otherwise, what will happen is the notice inviting tender will be more generic. It will hit the iceberg than the particulars. So they have to be handled upfront rather than post. Right. Okay, so can you please continue with your presentation? Yes. Yeah, I have actually a question for Professor You said that someone has to do it, but what do you Good afternoon. Uh, I, would, I would give you some experience on the technology, and I have three cases in this technology. I'll talk about mixed reality. And these are, one is the case of uh, mines. Another is a case of, you know, collaboration on the infrastructure side. And third is the retrofit. Now, there would be a couple of slides that you have to bear with me, you know, on my company, what we do, just to set a context. So, you know, we are a company which makes hardware, software, you know, the uh, infrastructure uh, software, Tecla, SketchUp, you know, these are all our softwares. Trimble has brought the commercial GPS to the world. So whatever GPS you are using, 1978, Trimble had brought the commercial GPS. So that's the smallest sensor that I can say. We are sensorizing the whole infrastructure ecosystem. Uh, primarily, we have five verticals, agriculture. So we are using the technology in as, as good as leveling the land, you know, laser leveler, which is at least making sure that the water is going to the every part of the field. Because unless the land is leveled, the water or your resources will not reach to the every, every part of the field. That's the lowest, you know, solution. And Farmers are buying that technology independently as well as under, you know, some of the companies which are providing this as a service like Coromandel, Escorts, you know. So that is one area. Plus, you know, there are some sensors which are giving the uh, condition of the soil. In terms of building, you know, right from the conceptual design, uh, SketchUp, some of you may have heard about it. If no, you know, it's a good point to look at building design. Then the detailing Tecla structure, you know, you may have, some of you, I'm sure you may have heard. Uh, and then similarly, we have just geospatial, civil engineering construction. And then there are some very specific applications about environment and waste, rail, water utilities. And each of them, you know, it's a combination of sensors, hard, hardware, software, and the uh, solution. So, uh, so the challenge today is, and let's take the example, and I'm not an expert on the 
landfill piece so i will just try to say what are the imperatives to solve some of the problems where there is a physical and there is a digital you know so dig so the whole concept is physical to digital and digital to physical now how do we get it how do we exactly know what is the physical condition of that ground so that would come from the positioning and scanning of that location be it you know uh, uh, an area which is related to a landfill or a mining or any infrastructure the second piece would be as this data keeps on moving doing the data model on that data so and then this data model doing the analytics will help you giving a decision that how do you tackle that problem now looking at the technology side you know what's the next big thing and i will talk about you know how the technology has emerged over a period of time so 1970s you know pcs came started from the large pcs you know it came to the desktop pcs by 1980 or so then there was this internet you know boom which has created uh, you know uh, solutions like amazon yahoo you know all those things google came into there then the mobile i think that was the biggest uh, 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 driver for taking the digital technology from place to place you know interconnecting people and i think the next thing which has come now it is also there for about a year or so is mixed reality and mixed reality is about a fusion of digital whatever you have modeled on the computer based on the constraints or the physical constraints or the social constraints and how do you combine it with the site you know what is your site condition the the companies which are playing the role there and i'm sure the young generation they may have definitely felt it facebook they have brought their vr google has a tango right similarly you know there are people who have brought the helmet based you know this mixed reality uh, vr so this is where you know the whole world is moving and trimble has tied up with microsoft you know whole so although we are hardware agnostic but today our you know understanding is that microsoft hololens is the best in the breed in terms of the hardware so we have tied up and what we have simply done is all of you you are engineers here you know you know what needs to be done you do not want to go into the depth of the technology that how that would be used so we, what we are trying to do is that what you are doing do your best and using the hardware we would try to give you experience to solve a problem so the first you know which is the virtual reality and in virtual reality what you are doing is whatever you have modeled and you know people have shown and i'm sure they are modeling things on computers based on the different constraints you can put this vr device and you can see and you can put work on various options on the model that you have generated on the computer the next thing comes is the augmented reality the ar piece on the ar piece you know you go to the site there are conditions there on the site you are adding the information from your you know tablet devices or mobile devices the digital content you are adding on that to make a decision you know better decision based on that now the final that comes is the mixed reality where we are merging the digital content with the site condition and for example i will show you now three use cases so what has happened is trimble in the architecture engineering construction and operations that's what aco so we did the first poc in 2015 with microsoft and then moved with some of the companies acom larsen and tubro in fact larsen and tubro is the first company in the world to do this for a construction environment because the construction environment is a very hostile environment where the equipment also needs to be rugged you know you can't use sophisticated equipment so this is actually happening in chennai on two projects you know i'll share those projects later on so coming to the trimble back we are hardware agnostic be it a google tango or a meta or a dakri dakri helmet you know we work with all of them and this i explained so for the engineers we do not want to complicate with the technology so you work the way you are working and then you know we'll try to solve how we solve the physical to digital problem so this is an example of a so, so i let me explain the problem and then we'll show so what we are doing here is so this is a mining application that has been done using mixed reality so what you are seeing here it's a digital model and digital is linked with the site through so somebody is putting a, a hololens a wearable device which is nothing but a spec and it's a mobile computer and through the your computer you know wireless system we are transferring the model to the 
digit, to the digital here and what you are seeing here so this guy has brought that entire model on a uh, imaginary tabletop and this is the actual site and this site is getting you know updated through the laser scanners and the equipments which are running on there they are also connected you know with this information borehole data or all that data and this information is getting updated on the site and this is getting collaboration between the site design or even your custom or your client so this is one example and i am only giving an example and people here there is a huge opportunity for the young ones you know to now see that how do we use this technology in solving some of the business problems or the practical problems that we are having the next example i will show you is the how do we get into the scale the model you know and go get into the nitty gritties of this model and go into the area that is of our interest to you so this is architect greg lynn he is one of the biggest architects of us and what he is doing and this is a digital model that was done simulated on the computer he has brought that digital model on the on a on a any imaginary plane so what you are seeing here is a digital model of a building and i am taking example of a building you can think of your own area it could be a airport it could be a port it could be a marine environment it could be any environment whatever digital model has been done 3d and i am talking of 3d digital model using different geometric modeling you know uh, technologies which are available today it is possible using this device to bring it on a on a on a one, one to one scale on a any imaginary plane you can even scale it you know how long is this area so it's one is to one scale and then depending on your area of interest you can go to the details and that that is what you will see you experience this and then probably you know i'll speak so just by those small gestures of you know the uh, your hand clicks you can zoom in you can go to that scale and you can then see you know what's happening inside you can even you know do retrofits you can plan other things so this is a example where acom i think most of us would be knowing acom and they are playing a big role even in the smart cities area so what acom is using it they are using it for collaboration whatever they are developing as a consultant they are collaborating in different around different offices and they are evaluating a fitment of a design or a solution that they have done to collaborate with different stakeholders of the project sitting at their own you know places but having the feel so this is what i'm talking physical to digital and digital to physical and the third example which we have is a so this is about in a given facility you know or as the construction is happening based on your model so so suppose a new facility is coming and there is a digital model so you can compare how the construction or how the and when i say construction don't limit it only to a building construction you can think of a construction or management of a problem on the site so here what we are showing is this is the hvac of the building this is as per the design and the other thing is as per the physical the construction is happening you can even measure you know what are the construction tolerances whether your design will actually fit into the physical environment or not so you can evaluate how the things are happening on site so digital physical you know combination and that's where i we use the word mixed reality now i'm i will try all of you because i was not having any example which was fitting into the today's discussion think about the same thing what i just explained with these th three examples and we can definitely you know try to solve some of the infrastructure or even the landfills or the mining you know problems and i know in mining trimble's laser scanners are being used very much you know laser scanners lidar scanning this is used for multiple things even when we are talking of drones drones are just a flying device drones doesn't mean anything the most important thing on a drone or a flying device is the sensor that you put on board on that and depending on your objective what you want to measure the sensor is decided whether i will only put the laser beams you know to measure the difference between the two surfaces whether i will use the complete 3d model of the surface you know depending on that so 
this is again a special discussion discussion you know we can we can discuss offline but these are some of the areas now this, this example this video which is a, about a 3 minutes video this is about online monitoring of anything and that thing could be a structure it could be bridge it could be a you know a site it could be a slope and how it is measured how it is monitored is by putting some of the geo technical sensors geodetic sensors seismic sensors you know on the site and then we have a software which has the ability to take the data online from these each of these sensors we don't manufacture all the sensors so this is a collaborative environment and then we are able to get that data analyze that data and give you like um, accelerations if if there is you know subsidence which is happening at what rate it is happening uh, velocity of that because subsidence are, take example of mumbai metro package 1 where you have what 18 plus i think all of them are heritage but 18 have been identified by larsen and tubro as the heritage buildings and i i am given to understand through maple the design the the the, the gc for the mumbai uh, mmrda or the uh, mumbai metro that the challenge is that not even a single building should get you know uh, destroyed or damaged now many of these buildings are uh, you know uh, dilapidated building time has gone and they have lived their life but because of reasons which are best known you know to the people there is this mandate so lnt as of now you know what they are trying to do is they are trying to measure the vibration monitors Vi uh, they are trying to do a vibration monitoring on the 18 buildings that their consultant has you know told them so similarly i am just saying uh, statue of unity that uh, you know sardar ballabh bhai patel which is coming in narmada uh, it's a it's a consortium of trimble uh, uh, who is there arup arup is the design consultant larsen and tubro is the contractor tce I, is the you know is validating the design for that so we our role is putting the sensors as the statue is going up geotechnical as well as the geodetic sensors we, you know whatever happens with time there uh, uh, temperature and all that we you the people would be able to get alarms and you know the timely informations before anything goes wrong either it could be because of wind or anything so this is one area and 4d control is our software and you will be able to get these data now it could be an interesting discussion how do you want to use this data but because trimble as a, we are the supplier of the equipment and will be able to give you the output of the data we are not the best in analyzing that data and that is the reason it is a requirement of an ecosystem there so again there is a huge requirement for civil engineers you know to interpret that data whatever data is coming to you uh, another example i would do i would say is the early warning system which incois has set up for government of india there also the entire trimble system is in place in imd for weather forecasting our system was put in place for you know identifying the location of the clouds and their you know moisture content at that and that is how you know the weather forecasting is becoming better and better in last one year some examples i have given but i would say we are open to discuss on a problem we we may not be able to give the end to end solution but through this community we would be able to solve some issues so i am not the whole of a solution i am part of a solution but together with this forum we can make a complete solution uh, i can just show you you know couple of things here uh, depend, because i think the gentleman who presented before me they would be doing it much more better uh, so this is about uh, in india most of the times we are not measuring the waste when the waste is getting you know uh, given from particularly the industrial hotels hospitals the toxic waste when we are uh, you know collecting so i will only say you know what technology is providing and then i think we would be open for a discussion if it makes sense for you so like the forklift trucks uh, we have a onboard sensor where they you will be able to get the weight actually and this i think probably this will tie back to where the money will come from because these people who are generating this this toxic waste they have to pay for managing that waste 
today what is happening is and maybe we need to be a bit honest here some people in hyderabad told me that when a hospital is generating a waste he just calls you know the municipal corporation and a truck comes and this is all off record i may be wrong but this is what i heard so there has to be a system which has to be built into the process where this toxic or the industrial waste it has to be monetized by the municipal corporation we have the ability to give you in exact you know quantities bin by bin or even you know how much waste one entity has generated and then if we know exactly you know how it has been done you know it this is this works on a refuse truck so we have two possibilities one is on the bucket so the as soon as the bucket comes you know at certain level on some of the you know these uh, uh, wheel loaders uh, they can give you the exact weight per pick right so that is one option or the per bin as they pick because as as soon it crosses a angular so there is a angular sensor as soon it picks you know beyond that level it will give you the weight and you don't have to measure weight per bin you can do it per day per month what has been picked from each one of them you can tag it with their bins also bins or whatever device you know they are giving you the waste this is one option so that solution is also there the other solution is whatever has come as a combined you can do it at the truck level also so that was all and as I, as i again said we are not the solution to the entire problem we are part of the solution and with this fraternity with this you know uh, uh, group we would like to see can we pick one or two challenges and try to see you know if we can solve them we have many sensors you know uh, you name for a prob I, i would again say not everything but we have possibilities and we have some collaborations with some of the people who are like we do not manufacture geotechnical sensors inclinometer and all those things we do not but geodetic sensors accelerometers that we do seismic sensors that we do and we measure and we have the ability to to be you know uh, sensor agnostic and take the data from each one of them so we have a possibility to solve some of the problems thank you so much for hearing me out i i hope that i made some contribution or some value addition to this audience and i look forward so my name is anand sirohi and probably professor singh may share you know my contact details it's very simple my first name anand underscore last name is sirohi s i r o h i at the rate trimble.com yeah so uh, we are operating a 3000 tons uh, municipal solid waste processing facility at kanjur mark and uh, there are two technologies uh, that are in existence in at site one is the bioreactor landfill and the other one is the mrf and composting facility so the design is to process around uh, 4000 tons of municipal solid waste through bioreactor technology and then around 1000 tons per day through mrf and composting facility mrf is material recovery facility so i am focusing only on uh, the challenge that we are going to face in the coming future which has already been addressed by uh, earlier speaker is uh, disposal of rdf whatever in the bioreactor technology what we do is we place the waste in a bioreactor and once the organic fraction gets degraded whatever remains has to be mined and the space has to be freed again for taking additional load of municipal solid waste during the mining process we anticipate uh, a lot of uh, combustible fraction to come out along with uh, soil conditioner we cannot call it compost as it may be contaminated with uh, heavy metals this material uh, which is refuse derived fuel we have done uh, lab testing of it and uh, we found that the calorific values are in excess of uh, 3500 kilo calories per kg which is a good fuel but uh, it is uh, there are several challenges before it can be used by the end consumer unfortunately uh, there are no disposal norms or policies in place though the central government policies uh, set by power ministry says that it can be used as a fuel in a power plant on a, within a 50 km radius but uh, they're not taking it because they have some challenges that they're not ready to face in their present uh, equipment and technology so what we get is uh, 
uh, and, and in the MRFN composting facility we have to do upfront segregation of the municipal solid waste. And if we according to the mass balance uh, if we do 1000 tons we get around uh, 400 tons of fraction which which is called refuse derived fuel. Now 400 tons of, frac of, of refuse derived fuel has to be disposed to take next day's waste as it takes a lot of space to even uh, keep it. The challenges that uh, we have faced are faced uh, in, in the disposal are basically because of these three. These three are the main uh, parameters because of which uh, the quality of RDF is not good enough to be used directly in a process boiler which are moisture, moisture uh, is in excess of 30 percent and if even if you bail it, uh, it generates leachate and because of this moisture microbial activities are happening on the 5 percent organic that is present in that uh, mix and that creates foul or bad odor. So even transportation is an issue. So and next is inert presence of soils and stones which are very difficult to segregate because uh, the uh, the input material is so heterogeneous you cannot have a particular equipment designed to segregate all the components equally. So whatever is there left uh, uh, you know at the end you have to bail it or you have to do some processing to increase the density and then just transport it. And it may also contain glass and electronic waste. So when presently we are disposing whatever we are not operating that uh, MRF and compost facility at uh, 1000 tons a day we have reached only 250 tons per day. So whatever RDF we are generating we have to dry it and then we are baling it into a, you know 700 kg bales and uh, transporting it to some processing industry small scale out uh, outside of Mara I mean outside of the city. But uh, the challenge is the challenge that we do not get enough revenue to support you know generation of RDF as well. Second uh, reject that comes out from the composting facility you know is the organic fraction which is plus 4 mm which is not uh, which cannot be called as a fertilizer as per FCO. So that organic fraction I am also trying to uh, make briquettes of, out of it and if that works then we can sell it as a fuel to process boilers. There are many process boilers which are presently accepting agri waste as briquettes and uh, we can attempt disposing around 100 tons of briquettes through that but we have not yet completed that process of uh, doing tests and trials. So that is all I want to limit my uh, topic for today's discussion. Yeah, so we have two technologies like I said in the beginning we have uh, that is part of our agreement when it was conceptualized and when we had uh, our company had submitted the tender it had two technologies mentioned and we have yeah so most of the waste like I said we are doing only 250 tons of uh, MRF and composting. So most of the waste it goes to the bioreactor and uh, we check with the compactor operator if it if it does not have hotel and uh, market waste means it is more dry we take it to the MRF facility because MRF facility is very difficult to segregate if the if the moisture content is very high. Yeah, yeah leachate uh, disposal uh, we are working. Heavy metals are not uh, found so far in two years. Uh, Agnes has done a lot of uh, sampling. So this is uh, the you know I saw that in morning that one of the topic is sustainability and I thought it is a good example which we have just finished a project in Jabalpur it is a temple. So if you see this is in Jabalpur center of India and it is a Jain temple and design life of the temple is 800 years okay and the picture what you saw is 90 meter height. So you can understand the importance of the structure and the consultants were from uh, 
you know the US and one of the condition which Jain temple trust put uh, they want all natural material to build the whole temple whatever either it's a foundation or superstructure so we selected Vavro stone column because mountain was nearby segregate and stones were mixed with lime too to give the binding effect you know it's not cementitious but yes they wanted binding so some of the layout plan if you see this is the layout of the temple and the based on the soil condition around 15 meter depth of treatment was necessary because soil was loose to provide enough shear strength and top of that there was a blanket layer and this is the soil if you can see it has got soft to firm clay and then at a deeper layer that got dense sand so this is the artistic impression it seems to be going to be India's largest Jain temple once it is constructed we finished the foundation in September some of the construction pictures to get you a feel that all natural material there is no cement there is no steel component in whole the foundations and perhaps that is the reason if you see in a current you know also the, all the ancient temples why they are standing on there are a lot of research going on perhaps olden days it was built in the similar uh, model and uh, so I just wanted to you know give that example that these are the foundations techniques which are available in the country and it can be used uh, where we you know minimum the you know uh, CO2 to the environment so it's one way of protecting the environment for you know generations to come up so it is all completed and uh, you know this is the column you can see which has been uh, built inside the ground and uh, this is a blanket layer on the top and then superstructure will come up so in front of you I have kept uh, a case study you know because I morning I heard Dr. Dibya was talking about uh, waste fill what uh, nowadays we are trying to do is we have technology similar Vibro stone column technology was used in Malaysia for a highway which maybe Mr. Avinas might be interested when situation comes arise a structure can be built rather than dispose it off right so there are technologies there maybe if you get time please have a look another case study which I wanted to show about so this is another example to contain that some leakage and uh, this is just to get a picture here and uh, go down sir this is a case study uh, from I think UK where there was a waste and uh, then later on jet grout column was made you know done to contain that so that it doesn't go to the neighboring residential area and uh, I'm happy that now this technology is in India and like you see this is that jet grouting and grout column was created like this and uh, you can see that person worker cannot go even you know it's so much smelly and all dangerous to the health no fly ash plus cement column that is called soil mix you can try it but you have to create the overlap no it's still leakage may happen okay. agree we are using that but cement column fly ash cement columns can be mixed used. mixed columns yes yeah. can be used right? at that time they use jet no, grouting no no that is you are talking about a stone Re column yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Like, you know, yeah 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 lot of the challenge challenge is to build it in the build field okay. That is a challenge because a stone column works on that, you know, the model ex expansion where you have soft soil. I know, but, so, but whatever, see, yeah. food, is it not possible in any way to, you know, because you are getting the concerning effect already. Yeah. Rather than expanding, expect column uh, from to right. We tried that uh, in Germany in Germany one Germany of the project. That, uh, yeah, Keller person. tried it in Germany uh, with whisker, uh, yeah. but somehow it could not scale up. So that is the reason it has got stuck there. Happens, some 20 years back, 30 years back, people would have tried. Mm. They left. Right. And when things become inevitable, maybe are more business sure. uh, oriented. Opportunity, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Crust, concrete? Okay, I don't know. I mean, uh, we, can. we can try. All these are the applications. Applications. Sustainability gets amalgamated with the ground improvement yeah yeah, yeah. unfortunately we tried this to bring in in india yeah. but somehow it didn't materialize uh, yeah. was a part of that team yeah yeah uh, no only thing is what happens is you know see that that is what the morning i was talking about the whole ecosystem has to support it's not about contractor it has to be feasible like that madam spoke about affordability that you know government and uh, that common people should be able to afford the technology and we are talking about a scaling up lab okay you can contain your cost but when you need to scale up then you need the technology which is faster which is cheaper and which serves the purpose right there the challenge comes for that project 
I'll say the scale of around maybe if I would have gone to heavy foundation which is a piled steel and cement, we are talking something around 60 percent saving because percent saving for that project. It, project to project, location to location. So coming to jet grouting, jet grouting is the late, I mean technology is pretty old but it's new in India from equipment perspective. So we are doing currently a, prospect, a project in uh, Andhra Pradesh, a dam project, Polavaram. So that is the technology where you are cutting the soil and mixing with the cement. The picture what you saw to, con you know, uh, the con uh, to contain the leakage into the good soil. So that is the jet grouting technology. Yeah, so here if you see, you have the soil which are the extreme uh, top right if you see. You want to contain that and that is why these are the columns you build inside the ground. You can go as deep as, to, right now we are doing around 20 meter, you can go 30 meter sort of things. But and, will the gap between the two columns? No, 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 it's overlap. I also, it's overlap. You see that on top, there is overlap, yes, tertiary, secondary. No, no, in case, nothing, it's just you are cutting the soil and mixing with the cement. No, no, no diaphragm work. It's just, you see the quality of the work. It's complete water time. There is no leakage and we are talking about permeability 1 to power minus 10 to power minus 6 meter per second. So this is a layout. You see the top is upper coffer dam and bottom is the downstream and there is a dam coming up. To avoid, you know, seepage into the excavation, this uh, diaphragm, uh, sorry, jet grout columns have been built. This is the design. You see that uh, Professor uh, Babu was asking about overlap. You give and we are talking about 2 meter design. It's a monster column and fresh on fresh, you know, so once you do one column, immediately you do another one. These are the quality control because this is the key because if you don't have a proper contractor and good practice at the site, you will have a gap because one column goes left, another column goes right, you have a leakage in between. So all parameters are computerized. These are some QAQC at the site. This is the site setup and you know, you have big, uh, big setup, it's a big setup. All machineries are imported and this is the machinery which cuts the soil. We are talking about 400 bars pressure at the tip. So if you keep your hand, hand will be chopped off. 400 bar, you can imagine how much pressure it is. Because you need that pressure to cut the soil and mix with the cement. This is the column Professor Babu was asking. It's a sandy, it's a river overburden. So there is no chance of leakage further. And you have an inclinometer in place, you can see the verticality. So all this technology when situation comes, now it is in India and we'll be happy to part of the projects. I mean, you know, we are talking about mining on Nagpur, something which we could look at and then, then finally dam will be up. So you are cutting the soil and then at the same time if you are mixing the cement and uh, bentonite mixture as per the design component. So it can also work as a load bearing element as well as, you know, a retention system. In fact, in fact, we have in uh, one of the things I wanted to I, is slurry wall. In US, we do quite a lot. Uh, no, no, in India, we have not this technology where you put this curtain, slurry wall. In US and Europe, we do an on and off. In this case, it, I think it's around uh, 15 meter or so where they, no, slurry wall, you, uh, you just excavate and fix the bentonite and soil mix into that. And once it dries up, it's a curtain. It's a curtain wall. No, it's go down, not subsurface. Yeah, subsurface type. But you don't need a steel like diaphragm walling or you know something. So it's a much economical. Yeah, horizontal CP jet grouting does that. Yeah, yeah, slab. Yeah, yeah, 20 meter does. Yeah, for metro sectors we do the quite a lot. Yeah, because water will seep up. So to that you seal the bottom. Okay, okay. Bottom sealing you are talking, right? No, bentonite. Sometimes we mix with cement. Sometimes we mix with the soil also, depending upon the component, the design, and also economics. That's all from me. I just thought to give you a little flavor what is happening in the industry. And uh, the good news is that all these technologies are in India now. And we are trying to import one by one. First we got ground improvement, now jet grouting is there, soil mixing is the next stage. And uh, yeah, so I think we are working towards, even though it looks morning was little, you know, people were a little fed up that nothing is moving up, but I think it's, we are making progress. Huh. Jet grouting is right now is go all going in Polavaram Dam, but we have done compaction grouting. So soil was like, you know, I'm, I think due to lack of time, maybe we can connect offline. There was a clay layer on the top followed by the dense sand, okay. Yes, we have considered liquefaction, okay. And because a stone column is, you know, normally from the design principle point of view, works much better compared to heavy foundation in earthquake because it's a flexible foundations. And it also allows pore water to dissipate much faster. 
okay. Third is from your design uh, philosophy point of view, capacity based, surely the bearing capacity has to be satisfied, but the measure was also from the settlement perspective that what is the, both checks have been done. They do actually SPT test. Yes. Between the columns, you do the test for improvement also. No, we are normally, we are following Euro code, code because Indian code of stone column design is more on that, you know, capacity calculation. It's a little copy of British and code and all, but Euro code talks about shear strength parameter and liquefaction, etc. Right. So, both have been done. Mm -hmm.